I believe you were PWI Rookie of the Year in 2019. Do I have had that correct? Yes, you do. The uh, award was was given out, uh, I believe, this January to represent the 2019 year. Um, I'm beyond humbled and honored to receive the award. Uh, I really didn't expect it, just knowing that uh, I've got a lot to prove myself. I have a lot of goals and expectations for myself, and I wasn't even thinking about, you know, the the implications of being the rookie of the year until it finally hit me, you know, it hit me that a lot of my hard work and a lot of the the learning and and things that I've been doing is paying off. Yeah. It's funny in a way to think of you as the rookie of the year because people have been following MLW and a lot of the biggest indies out there have been seeing you regularly for two years, maybe three years now. So do you really even feel like a rookie at this point? Yeah. Well, you know, considering I had my very first, professional wrestling match on december 31st 2017 so my uh my career of having matches is just a little over two years but as we all know this is a this is a sport this is an art that takes a lot of time to, to grasp a lot of time to master so to go to say i was a professional from from my first match um it, you know obviously i was you know i've been a, a working professional since that time but uh for someone like me to come as far as I did in two years, I think it's quite deserving of a Rookie of the Year award. I also earned the Rookie of the Year for MLW in 2018. And uh, I think I think Ronda Rousey got the Pro Wrestling Illustrated Rookie of the Year in 2018. So it just speaks volumes to uh, what type of athletes and careers that they're giving this award to. Definitely, I definitely feel very deserving of it now, looking back on my first two years in the sport. I think I heard on the Steve Austin interview that you came from a marketing background and that's what you studied in college. Were you immediately able to quit your full-time job and go into wrestling? Uh, there, you know, there was definitely a transition period uh, when I suffered a knee injury, um, you know, saving some money, staying at my Aunt Linda's house. But as, uh, as soon as my first match, I, I was yet to uh, be employed by another day job. So I was able to sort of survive on the, on the indie on the indie scene and 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 thanks to my aunt linda she was able to support me through that through that hard time of being injured and not being able to wrestle but you know since then wrestling has been my primary source of of income and and i've been putting everything i have into it each weekend and week out and one of the things that really made a lot of people take notice was you joining the new heart foundation is that still active the heart foundation is still still strong and going and, and with that bond uh, between me and Davey Boy Smith Jr. has never been stronger. Uh, Teddy, Teddy's departure from the company was definitely unforeseen and out of the blue. But we all, we both know and respect me and Davey Boy. We both know the, the trials and, and the things that, that Teddy Hart has had to go through and the expectations that he's had to deal with and a lot of things going on in his life right now that are out of our control. But we wish him the best and he'll always be a part of the Hart Foundation in my heart. Glad to hear all that, that uh, onwards and upwards kind of spirit. It's amazing to me with your career that while you're totally new in a sense and being less than two and a half years into the business, you, of course, have that old school feel and the connection to the old school in general, which is very, very rare. And I think you could say that the same about Dynasty, who you feed it with for a long time. Did you know the Dynasty guys before coming to MLW? So I was familiar uh, with the careers of uh of MJF, uh, having kind of broken in with him into the Midwest area, because being that's where I was from, uh, Maxwell Jacob Freeman sort of bet on himself and came down to the Midwest to get a few bookings and stuff and to extend his career. And uh, I was able to uh, share a ring with him quite a few times and, and you get to know the kid. Uh, you know, very blessed to have worked with him. 
I uh, wish him all the best in the AEW. I definitely learned a lot from that young man. But uh, Richard Holiday and Alex Hammerstone were a couple of hidden gems that I hadn't met up until I joined MLW. So really because of MLW, uh, I've been able to, you know, increase my work rate and extend the capacity of wrestlers that I, that I share a ring with, whether it's, you know, from the luchadors all the way to what you're saying, like the old school kind of classic approach to wrestling. I've, I've gotten such a, such a good variety, such a good buffet of wrestling ever since I've joined MLW that I'm starting to feel like a really full package. I believe your roots go to primarily Ohio and Kentucky and MLW primarily plays in cities like Philadelphia in New York. Was this your first time going to a lot of these cities as part of MLW? Yeah, so I, I had definitely had some experience wrestling in the Northeast. Uh, when I first started wrestling, I did a couple did a couple shots up there, but and then a couple shows in Chicago as well. So I, I was I was kind of getting my feet wet in these areas, but it was really MLW that really um, you know loaded up the loaded up the chamber and really pulled the trigger on my career in these in these territories. And I've got so much to, to be thankful for to them. Uh, my very first show in Mexico was with uh, tagging with Davey Boy Smith Jr. And that's where we really found ourselves as a tag team. We had some success against uh, uh, Stream Tiger and Dragon Lee, uh, one of the hardest hitting battles I've ever been a part of. Uh, one of the one of the wildest crowds the world's ever seen in Tijuana, Mexico. And we're looking to go back there on March 13th, you know, given everything, everything goes smoothly with travel. I'd love to be back there. Now, a lot of people enter wrestling with eventual aspirations of acting or doing something else. And as we talked about, you come from a marketing background and then got into wrestling full time. As a very charismatic kind of person, do you have goals for life outside of wrestling or is really wrestling what you want to do for a long, long time? Uh, I think I think my story and, and every every bit of me that comes comes into wrestling with a full heart. And I think my story is, is, is a wrestling story and, and it's a real story. You know, I'm not making up any gimmicks or any fake names or anything. I'm going out there each and every day and it, it feels, it feels real to me in, in every way. So wrestling is my number one focus. I, I think I'll be a professional wrestler for at least the next 20 years. But of course, you know, being who I am and, and being in the spotlight, I try to carry myself with a certain level of charisma and star power. And, and if another venture or another company whether it's acting or, or comedy of any sort uh, i would love to be involved in it because at the end of the day i am a performer and i do it for the people and, and whatever the people would like to see me in i would love to be a part of it I, I don't think that's anywhere out of the ballpark for me to be in the acting business at some point certain wrestlers people just know a lot about them they know their favorite bands they know where they like to hang out and all that but you've kind of managed to keep a mystery for the most part is there anything that you wish more people knew about you personally uh well you know i, I try to be as open as i can but at the same time you know you don't want to play all your cards you know you don't want to show them all but you know i i, I try to make sure everybody knows that, that i'm an avid gamer and uh and i like to get online and play different games and stuff with my fans so hopefully uh you know talking about those other avenues i can find some more free time right now wrestling is the main focus for me uh so much going on so little time but maybe down the road i can uh extend some of that passion for gaming and, and perhaps do some st twitch streams with some fans and, and, and show show people another side of me and was wrestling always the performance that uh angle that you were hoping to go with it never was music or something along those lines uh, well, you know, growing up, I had a few different, you know, we all go through some different phases. I, I always had a love for, for hip hop and rap music. Uh, I definitely had a few, a few uh, phases where I was performing in that capacity and doing some, some different freestyle rapping and, and, and recording with some hip hop friends of mine. And, and also, you know, I've, I've, del I've delved into the world of esports and competitive gaming as well. So I've always been a performer and a competitor. And I think it comes down to doing things that, that brings me uh, a sense of social value and belonging. It's, it's, it, to me, it's all about people. It's all about having a lot of uh, people involved in the same hobby because, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a very reclusive person. You know, I'm a very outgoing, uh, very extroverted. So anytime it involves people and whether it's listening or performing or gaming or, or, or fighting and boxing, working out at the gym, uh, you know, from CrossFit to powerlifting, it's all, to me, it's all about the community it's all about the effort involved with everybody competing against one another because competition, you know, creates excellence. You know, if it wasn't for each other working against each other, then we wouldn't have the greatness that we have today in the world. 
And bring it back to MLW, some of the performers have had their own talk show <clears throat> kind of segments. And you had a great series of segments where you, Teddy and uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr., when you were primarily feuding with the Dynasty, you had great segments in the car and the hotel room and all that. Do you think we might ever see a talk show kind of segment from you? Yeah, I think that the podcast and everything is, is a huge vital part of the wrestling uh, business today. I think a lot of guys are making a good living by ex expressing the, their views and their stories and sharing that with the fans. And I think podcasts are great. I love listening to you know the Stone Cold podcast and, and other ones like that. So I definitely foresee that in my future. Right now, I think it's a, it's a very popular market right now. So it's something I'm, I'm not uh, have the resources to compete in that market right now. But Obviously, once some more time opens up for me and, and, I've, and I've really mastered my craft and have a few more stories to share, I'll definitely be starting my own podcast. But in the meantime, those stories are racking up, and each and every weekend, it, it seems like i got a new story to share. So. so if I've learned anything right here, there might be eventually a podcast. You are a hip-hop artist in the making you are going to be wrestling for 20 plus years and a lot of great great things are to come so in closing yeah, Brian, any last words for the kids oh uh, no i just want to say thank you uh to all my fans uh a special thank you to the 69 percent of pro wrestling illustrative voters that voted me as the rookie of the year uh truly a unanimous uh you know landslide of a vote victory for me uh it's not something that i would have ever expected i would have thought that you know, awards like that might might go over my head or, or, or pass me by based on the unique situation I'm in. Uh, I never thought I would truly get credit for anything that I've done. And all that made me do was work harder and harder and harder just to prove the people wrong, prove them wrong that I'm not just getting this, these opportunities based on who I am, but I'm getting them based on who I really am. And that's a hardworking young man. And, and I'm going to keep pushing forward. Stay with me. Stay following the journey. Flying Brian 41 on Instagram, Flying Brian Jr. on Twitter. You guys know where to find me. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. You are one of the people who makes Fusion an entertaining show to watch every week. So looking forward to seeing you again in New York soon. Thank you so much. And I will definitely be back at the Melrose Ballroom. See you in July. Thanks again for your time, Brian. See you there, friend. Have a good one. Outrocast.